she declined to the first day it was only on my birthday never mind all the lines on the highway give me time to reflect a bit cause i'm just having a good day having a good day having a real good morning i'm just having a good day food feeds our soul it nourishes us and gives us strength to do great things each day cooking together creates lifelong memories food has a magical way of bringing us back to a specific moment in time it is what connects us across the globe and across generations the food we enjoy is a part of our ethnic identity My name is Kasara. I enjoy cooking for fun and would love for you to join me. Together we'll learn how to make a few easy and delicious recipes. Let's get started. Uh, hi there. I'm Creamit. Creamit the Frog. And today, I would like to cook something with Kassara. How are you today, Kassara? I'm good, but first before we cook, we need to follow some safety tips. Uh, sure. Safety tips before you cook. Ask an adult permission before cooking. There should always be an adult in the kitchen with you when you are cooking. Wash your hands well before you begin handling food. Take extra caution when working with knives, hot liquids, and any appliances. Read labels carefully. Keep your cooking area tidy. If there's a spill, clean it up immediately. Okay, now that we've covered a few tips on how to cook safely, let's get cooking. Today we'll be making mini cheeseburger sliders, a diner's famous French toast, and lemon berry pie. Now we'll be making cheeseburger sliders. These are the ingredients. Two pounds of lean ground beef, half a tablespoon of olive oil, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of garlic powder, half a large yellow onion, finely diced, one quarter cup of mayonnaise, eight slices medium cheddar cheese, six ounces of medium cheddar shredded, 24 dinner rolls, two tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted plus more to grease baking sheet, and one tablespoon of sesame seeds. These are the instructions. Place a large skillet over medium high heat with half a tablespoon of olive oil. Add diced onion, then two pounds of ground beef, and break up with a spatula. Preheat oven to 350 Fahrenheit. Butter the bottom of a rimmed baking sheet. Season with one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, and one teaspoon of garlic powder. Stir in a quarter cup of mayo. Saute over medium-high heat, breaking up the beef and cook just until cooked through, then remove from heat. Cut buns in half. Place bottom half of dinner rolls on buttered baking sheet and line bread with sliced cheese. Spread ground beef mixture evenly over the sliced cheese, using the back of a spatula to square off edges. Cover the ground beef with six ounces of shredded cheddar. Place the top of the buns cut side down over the burgers. Brush tops with two tablespoons of melted butter and immediately sprinkle tops of sesame seeds.
Bake at 350 Fahrenheit for 12 to 15 minutes or until cheese is melted and tops are golden brown. My Kite The wind sends my kite soaring up in the sky, swooping and swaying as if it's come alive. My kite does a dance as it yearns to be free. Our only connection, this long slender string. But if I should let it go, it would come crashing down. For my kite to fly high, it needs me on the ground. So Mitch, I heard your diner is famous for your award-winning pies. Hey Kasara, well, we are. And what makes it even more special is my mom makes all of our pies homemade in house. So when you have that initial bite, you know why we're the best pie. What's your favorite thing about working at Hathaway's Diner? Oh, that's a really good question. So I love people and I love food. So coming to work every day and providing people with the best service possible and amazing food is so important to me. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, so I got a question for you. Going on all these adventures, what do you love most about them? I love eating the food afterwards. Oh, wow, I like that. Diners became widely known as the cool hangout spot in the 1950s, and they were very appreciated for having a relaxed atmosphere with friendly staff and tasty affordable menu items. Well, we always start with a fresh crust. We make sure it's pressed down nice. That's what makes it so yummy. All the natural <sighs> butter in there. Okay, make sure it's pressed on the sides. And then we also make sure it's pressed again. Nice. First, we're gonna start with food color. We can change the food coloring any time. You know, sometimes on Halloween we make it orange. So you need about three drops in there. See all the colors coming through? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, as I said before, everything has to be fresh and washed and dried. So you're gonna put a cup of each of the berries in there. This is one whole pie that we just made. And it's a very popular pie, nice and refreshing. That's gonna be called your lime berry pie. Mm, that's delicious. Excellent. That's what we wanna hear. Perfect. You're hired. <laughs> Chip and Curly, The Great Potato Race, by Kathy B. The Spud City Festival was just days away and the whole town was getting ready. The morning of the festival, Chip arrived early to study the race path. Meanwhile, the crowd gathered. The couch potatoes lined the race route. The french fries stood with their tater tots. The sweet potatoes practiced cheers. After stretching, Chip high-fived the tots and posed for pictures. Everything was going great until... Curly arrived, leaping toward the other racers. Chip groaned. To top it off, Curly wedged in next to him at the starting line. Chip gripped his sack and started straight ahead. He wanted to win more than ever. 
Ready, set, go, said the announcer. The potatoes hopped forward and Chip whipped past everyone. Chip, 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 chanted the crowd. I've got this in the bag, he thought. Keep moving, keep moving, the twice bakes repeated. Chip heard someone gaining on him, but he didn't look back. Look out, the barbecue chip shouted. Here comes a hot potato. Even the couch potatoes stood up and took notice. The waffle fries couldn't decide who to cheer for. And then it happened. Curly pulled ahead. The crowd went wild. Chip hopped faster, but he couldn't catch up. Just ahead, a tree root stuck out of the ground. Chip had his eye on it, but Curly headed right towards it. Oomph! Curly tripped and tumbled to the ground. A thought sprouted Chip's mind. With Curly down, this was his chance to win. He zipped past Curly and took the lead. But as the finish line came into view, he felt rotten. Chip glanced over his shoulder. He hashed it over in his mind. There was only one thing to do. He bounced toward Curly, who lay pancaked on the ground. Chip reached down and pulled him up while the other potatoes bounced by. One potato, two potato, three potato, four counted the announcer as the racers entered the final stretch of the course. Five potatoes, six potatoes, seven potato. wait, here comes two more. Curly and Chip had hopped back onto the path and were picking up speed. In a flash, Curly peeled ahead of the pack with Chip on his heels. As they neared the end of the race, Chip barreled along and gave it all he had, but it was no use. Curly sprang across the finish line. In an instant, Chip's dreams of winning were mashed. The sweet potatoes cheered. The other races congratulated Curly. They're going to butter him up now, Chip muttered. He slipped out of his sack and tossed it onto a pile. As he turned to leave, Curly stopped him. The relay is next. Want to be my partner? Chip froze in his steps. Me? Sure, no matter how you slice it, we'd make a great team. A smile sprouted on Chip's face. Okay, bud, let's do it. They practiced on the sidelines. Before long, they were in a groove. Maybe I'll finally win a golden bushel award said Chip, but there was a problem. A new team had arrived, the shoestring fries. They were lean and snappy and moved in perfect step. So this is how you make Hathaway special French toast. So our French toast here is custom made for us. As you can see, it's nice and thick. You're gonna start off by washing both sides. Alrighty, so I'm gonna get the grill ready. In France, French toast is actually called pain perdu, which means lost bread. French toast was a dish created as a way to use up all the bread so that bread would not be wasted, dipping the leftover bread in a mixture of eggs and milk and frying it, creating a new flavorful dish that could be enjoyed by the whole family. So you'll know they're ready after you flip them if you feel them and they're not soft in the middle. So once the bread is cooked fully, you'll know it's ready to go. Cheers. How's your French toast? 
It's delicious. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming by on your adventure today. We loved having you here. And now you're part of the family. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Bye. See you. Hey, that's the part of the day. <laughs> I'm really excited to learn how to make a sweet cow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I fully separated it. <laughs> oh my goodness. See? It's so delicious. I told you you'd like it. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Lots of blooper right there. Every culture has its own unique celebrations. Whichever special occasion you are celebrating, whether it be a large or an intimate gathering, there is one thing that remains true everywhere around the world. Rituals and celebrations help ground us in tradition. It gives us the opportunity to feel excited about what's to come, to laugh, to cry, and to create special memories together as a community.